you have a chromebook and you have a 3d printer and you are wondering if chromebook can be used for 3d printing i was in a similar situation and in this video i will show you how i 3d printed using a chromebook hi hi my name is samuel jacob and welcome to this channel in this channel we are discussing chromebook for everyday tasks i am using acer spin 714 but the method is same and all the chromebooks okay so why i have to 3d print something using chromebook my logitech keyboard's leg got broken and i needed the leg for good typing angle so i thought i would design and 3d print that leg luckily somebody already posted a 3d model in the thingiverse for the keyboard order kudos to the designer because of that i was able to save a lot of time to 3d print you need a 3d model i mean it's a basic and the 3d model has to be in a stl format you can if you don't have one you can download any model from a thingiverse or a printables.com or you can create your own 3d model and that is for another video because that is not easy i will show you how to use a tool in chromebook and create a 3d your own 3d model once you have stl file all we need is a slicing software to generate a g code basically that is what this video is all about running a slicer in chromebook a slicer is a software that converts a 3d model into set of instructions that a 3d printer can understand and move the head and extrude the plastic and do printing stuff right i am going to show you two popular slicing software and how to install them in chromebook one of the software is prosa slicer and another one is cura i wish chrome os had an app store from which software can be installed but unfortunately for now we need to go into the terminal and type few commands to get it working to get into the terminal first we need to enable linux development environment in chrome os i will show you that first then we will see how to download and install the slicer software okay so we are going to uh, see how to enable linux development environment on a chromebook so to start click the app launcher uh, search button and search for linux and you would see this one the second one the settings one and go there and you will see linux development environment and click turn on and the wizard it's very simple i'm going to leave it as a default disk size which is 10 gb and it is going to install it would take a few minutes and everything would be done once this progress bar is done that's it that's how simple it is to enable linux development environment on chromebook okay so to down uh, the slicers go to prusa3d.com click on software and click on the linux link and it would start down uh, the software to your download folder similarly go to ultimaker software and ultimaker cura and download for free then select ultimaker cura linux the linux modern just select the linux and that would do you the similar file to your download folder so if you go to our download folders yeah we see the two downloaded files we need these files in the linux vm so i am going to create a new folder called linux and i am going to move them to the linux folder then i am going to click share it with linux and that's it so now this folder and the contents are shared with the linux so let's open the terminal and go into linux so type terminal and once you go there you will see penguin click on that and it will land in the, the terminal window to list all the files we have downloaded uh, those are stored or shared here in mount chrome os and my files then downloads and linux so we would see those two files i mean we can extract these files here and run it here but i would just go there to the downloads folder and uh, open the prosa 3d the zip file open what we need is the gtk3 app image and we need it for or at least i need it for x86 64 if you are using a arm based chromebook you have to use arm v7 So how do you find which Chrome OS you are using is you can go to about Chrome OS 
and go to diagnostics and then you should see your processor version so in this case if you see intel or amd that is x86 okay so now let's go back to our processor 3d so i am opening the gtk3 i copied then i go into linux and i paste it so now we have two app images we need to execute these two files so we need to provide executable, executable permission. So I'm providing that and start that app image. Okay, so now I'm going to execute this Prusa slicer. And before that we need to, so the Prusa slicer need one more software. So that is, you need this library libglu1. I already installed so you won't see anything but otherwise if you don't have that library installed it will this Prusa slicer app image won't run it would fail saying your yeah, library is missing okay that's it you will go, go into the Prusa slicer configuration wizard and you can configure it and so I have the mini family so that's correct or if you have a different one you have to choose that nope none okay that's it so if i have a stl file i can start printing now to install ultimaker Cura, we have to do the same thing we have to run the app image and that's it so with the with app image you can start and run all the slicers you want and once slicer is started everything else is same and I will show you how to create a yeah, STL file into a G code use uh, Chromebook. Let's first download a 3D model. So I'm going to go to printables.com. You could download it from uh, thingiverse.com too, but in this case uh, I'm using printables. Go to 3D printers. I mean, you can download any files, but I'm going to use the Menchi, so test models and I'm going to 3D Benchy and download. So it's going to ask me what I want. I mean, the printables provides already a G code for mini and MK3, but that is not what we are here for. So we are going to download STL, then we are going to create our own G code. So let's download. So let's go to the download folder and this one we have to copy into our Linux folder so that we can access it from the Linux VM. So once it is copied, then go to terminal, launch Prusa slicer one more time. So, so it will take you to the Prusa slicer, adjust whatever the quality and whatever things you need, then open the file. So in this case, we need to import, import the STL. Okay, so let's see. So, one, so when you open it, it will go here. So we want to go to mount slash MNT Chrome OS. So you have to click on the computer, but if you see it is unclickable. So it could be a software bug. So, so you have to use keyboard here. Press enter, it will go to the computer. And then we can go to MNT using keyboard again. Then Chrome OS, then my files and the downloads, Linux, and it will select the STL, right? So that is the only STL file there. So if you select the STL file, it would show this one. Then we can go to import, sorry, export, then G code. Then that would save the STL files would be in the Linux folder. We can see it created 3D bench one or 25 minutes G code. So what we need to do is we, we need to attach a USB drive to copy this to the 3D printer. So I am attaching a USB drive and it is here. So I have to copy this to title. Okay, so that is done. Then I'm ejecting the USB drive. That's it. I'll see you after the print. Okay, the print came fine nothing special about this this is a model we printed it shows that the slicer works as it should in the chromebook also that's it thanks for your time if you found this video is useful please like and subscribe to the channel thank you